Yes. Okay. So here. So 2D frame. The one difficulty with, uh, with doing the little pithy thing that they do is for ours, we have 15 feet on the bottom story and then 13 feet for upper stories. Right, so probably what you'll want to do is just do four stories, um, story height, let's make it 13 feet. But then what you'll have to do is you'll have to move the nodes down on the bottom to make the bottom one 15 feet. Right, so we can look at that in a second. So story height, what, 13, we have to add 12 to that, is that right? So, okay, whoop. this is really 56. Number of bays, we have three bays. Bay width is going to be 30 feet. Okay. And we'll just do default for now, and we will uh, take care of that later. So, okay. Okay, there we go. So that's basically what I did, except for I haven't messed with the bottom floor yet. Right, so they're all 13-foot story heights for now. Okay. Okay, so today we're going to do the equivalent lateral force procedure using SAP. And we're basically going to redo the example from last time. But just go step by step through SAP. Is the light okay, or should I turn the front light on? Okay. So from last time, just so we have some numbers in front of us, we said that we're going to use a four-story reinforced concrete special moment frame. So that gives us an R value equals eight a C sub D value, which we'll figure out in more detail what that actually is and what we use it for. We use it for drift checks. But a C sub D value of 5.5. .5. An importance factor, which in ASC 705 they call it I, in 710 they call it I sub E, is 1.0. And we're going to design it to have no irregularities. Remember, if we have something with irregularities in it, um, we have to up the d um, design forces to account for the fact that it has irregularities with the little row factor, that kind of thing. So we're not going to do that. And for the site, once we did the site, the soil conditions, all the little you know, factors that we needed to do, we had SDS, the design short period acceleration of the spectrum of 1G, and SD1 of 0.6 G. Just so we have it all kind of in our notes. The plan view. Ninety feet by one hundred and eighty feet, and we're going to do a perimeter frame. So just frames around the perimeter. And if we look at this frame here, it's a four-story. Three bay. So the bay widths are three at 30 feet each. And for purposes of the example today, we're just going to do 13 foot story heights because to actually move the stuff, it's really kind of annoying actually in SAP, right? 
So if you play around with it, you'll be able to figure out how to do it. You can select nodes, and you can move the nodes and stuff like that. But it's really kind of annoying. OK, so we're just going to do, for purposes of this example, to get going, right? 4 at 13 feet for simplicity. If you want to move it, if I remember right, you select the nodes, and then you you move the nodes. I forget which command it is. But you would move the nodes down two feet um, in order to make the, the bottom story 15 feet. Or instead of using their template, you could actually draw things yourself. But it's easier to use their template and move the nodes down. OK, and then, so this is for the perimeter frame. right? So we've got a perimeter frame here and here that looks like this. We've got a perimeter frame on this side. right? We're not going to look at that today. We're just going to do a 2D frame. If we want to do a 3D model, we could. right? This is six bays instead of three bays, just twice as long. Um, as far as the gravity frame, let's see. So in this region, let's do the gravity columns. And let's do them a little bit different this time, just to draw a distinction, um, right, and so on. Before, what we did is we made the perimeter columns, which I'm not drawing on here, just to go a little more quickly. We did the perimeter columns spaced at 30 feet. And we did the interior gravity columns also spaced at 30 feet. We don't necessarily have to do that. right? They don't have to line up with each other. So let's space these at 20 feet instead. So spacings here are all going to be 20 feet. And the reason I'm doing this is just so when we calculate tributary widths and stuff like that, um, we'll have a different tributary width because of how the gravity columns are going. And so that way, we're not using the same number of 30 for both. OK, so in the rationale for this, putting the columns closer would be something like to use a 5-inch slab you know, instead of an 8-inch slab or something like that. That would be our motivation for doing 20 foot spacing instead of 30 foot spacing. Just on the inside columns. Yeah, yeah. So if I were, just for clarity, if, if I were to draw the outside columns, right, they'd still be like that. Like that. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five. No, I need one more. Yeah, that's a great picture. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so those still are all spaced at 30 feet. And this is a bad picture. Right, so they're still all spaced at 30 feet around the edges. So those are all 30 feet. I'll just draw it out. That way we can have it all here. 30 feet, 30 feet. I'll try and draw these better up here. So those are going to be all spaced at 30 feet. But the grid inside will space at 20 feet. right? And I probably need to draw more in there. I don't know if that's the right number or not. 